Hi, thanks for tuning in to MC Youth Presents. I'm Sam Miller, here with Leah Vart, uh, Palo Alto, I mean, a Los Altos 15-year-old sophomore who started the Water Youth Network for Kids in Need. Can you tell us a little about your organization? Yeah, hi, thank you for having me. I've been involved with the uh, Water by Youth program for about two years now. I started when I was in eighth grade at Egan Junior High School. We, a couple of my friends and I, we became aware of the world water crisis and kind of it really got us thinking about human rights and what the basic human rights are. And we realized that so many people don't have access to clean water. And we really think that is so important and the essential cornerstone for everything. So we started fundraising to build a well. And we had a goal of $1,000, but we were, became really passionate about it and just kept going. So what exactly is your role in the organization? Um, I started Water by Youth, and so I'm kind of, I'm the president, and so I control all the fundraising events and communicate with club members. So um, why do you think the Water Youth Network is so important? I think it's really important for both kids here and in the villages that we can help gain access to clean water. Here we live in kind of a, not a strange place, but it's very different from most places in the world. And it can be easy to forget that so many people don't have the privileges that we have here, like access to clean water, for example. And I think it's been really transformative for a lot of us to learn about this other world, really, that's happening. And when kids in Africa are gaining uh, access to clean water, it changes everything for them, really. They can now go to school. They can open businesses. They have much more time on their hands. They're not getting sick. So I think overall, it's been very transformative. So when you mentioned Africa, what specific countries do you mean? Um, we fundraise for Charity Water, and currently they're building wells all over Sub-Saharan Africa. But the wells we've contributed to have been built in Uganda and Malawi. So um, who, el who else are some of the contributors in your organization? Um, Anisha Desai is my vice president and Jill Anaporta. We also have some amazing advisors we've been working with for the last few years. Brenda Dykeman was our principal at Egan and she actually retired last year but we still meet with her all the time. She's been the greatest. She's been so helpful and caring. And we also work with Sabori Oli Oi and he lives in Kenya. He's a cultural ambassador, and he actually came to the States to fundraise for wells in his own community in um, Kenya. And I came in touch with him and was so inspired by his story. And he's here now, and he's coming over to have dinner at my house in a couple weeks. But um, yeah, we have a lot of really amazing advisors. So do you think your school is like doing a lot to help, help you? Yeah, we have about 50 club members this year, which has been really exciting. It's our biggest year. And we're planning all kinds of events from t-shirts to bake sales to all that. And it's really fun when you have a team of a certain size because you get all these different talents that you just can't have with a small team. Like we have some really talented artists, some really talented chefs, some really talented poster makers, everything you need on a team. Have you been or have you been to or helped out with any of the countries you mentioned? I haven't, but I definitely love to go at some point in my life, hopefully soon. It's um, really far away, <laughs> but I definitely would like to go. So how can others be involved? Um, what's new this year is every month on our website, www.waterbyyouth.org, we post different monthly themes, is what we call them. And they're basically fundraisers that anyone can follow along with. And it's step-by-step -step instructions and photos and links and all sorts of other helpful information to make it so as easy as possible to have a successful fundraiser. So when you say themes, what do you mean by that? Like, what are some of the past themes? 
Um, August. The August theme this year was really exciting because it was our first one and we started out with the basics with a lemonade and cookie stand and in October we had a coin drive and this month was a bake sale. So it's just all sorts of little fundraisers that people can do on their own or with their school or with their friends. So um, what is your ultimate goal? Um, I'd say our ultimate goal is to have as many schools and kids involved as possible. Um, ultimately to build as many wells as possible and to have everyone have access to clean water. Is this something you'd like to be doing your whole life? Yes, I'd definitely love to go into some kind of charity work in my life. I'm not exactly sure what, but I'm definitely interested. Have you ever been involved in any other charities? Um, most of my charity work has been involved with Charity Water and Water by Youth, so all revolving around the world water crisis. So what are your plans for like the next two or three years for this country? Oh, sorry, the organization. Um, I'd say probably trying to get to branch out more and to have campuses involved um, around the Bay Area and hopefully maybe other states or other countries and to find new ways to get people involved. So um, let's say like you're meeting at your club, what is like something you would do on an average day? Um, we definitely, we ask, we try to ask our club members for things they're interested in or ideas they have to get other people interested. And um, we talk about what we've done so far and set goals for the future. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, um, shoot. How, how many people are involved in this? Uh, we have 50 club members, and then we have um, Covington Elementary School recently agreed to work with us to fundraise in the upcoming year, which is really exciting. And then uh, Egan Junior High School, where I went um, this year, has decided to have the student council be involved and do all sorts of fundraisers. They actually came up with one of their own which is Halloween grams. They had um, a week so students could buy little pieces of candy to send to their friends at brunch, and then all the proceeds went to Water by Youth, which was really exciting. Do you have any of your own ideas for fundraisers? Um, I'd love to have some kind of big event or like party or auction. That'd be a lot of work, but I think it's a great goal to work towards. All right, so what is the weirdest noise you can make? Oh my god. Uh... Do you have any ideas? I need some inspiration. Um, just do the best animal noise you can. Best animal noise? Okay. I'll do a go bat. Yikes. That's I'll practice. Impressive. I'll practice. So, uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That was a great interview. <laughs> now we have a segment about made by man, yes, Miguel Marino about Raymond Chen, a Palo Alto High School freshman who defies gender roles and plays volleyball for his school. He is a very talented volleyball player, and I hope you enjoyed the segment. Thank you for tuning in. Palo Alto High School has been the most competitive you. volleyball teams in California, winning the Division I California State Championship in the fall of 2010. But unbeknownst to many, the high school garners a male freshman volleyball player by the name of Raymond Chen. But when did he start playing volleyball? Competitively, this is my second season. So about two years. So I started playing first in sixth grade. I play volleyball because I really love the sport. Uh, I started off with soccer, but then I couldn't really keep up with everyone else, so I switched over to volleyball. Raymond is one of the few male students who plays volleyball in high school with the sport being subjected to gender stereotypes. A report by the Sporting Goods Manufacturing Association in 2007 showed that 73% of all volleyball players the age of 17 or under were female while girls made up 89% of all high school volleyball players. Do other people think that there is a stigma towards male volleyball players? Yes, because people would think volleyball as, the, uh, as a girl sport, so if they hear about a guy like doing volleyball, they would think their sexual orientation would be like different from others. Uh, they would think that because they would think it's not meant for guys and that like it's only just a girl's sport. I definitely have more female friends who play volleyball than male friends who do, and I just don't hear of um, boys playing volleyball as much. So 
I feel like there would probably be some kind of negative stigma against them because if they do, it would be seen as pretty unusual. It's kind of set in everyone's mind that volleyball mo is more of a girl sport, not really a guy sport, especially up here in North California. Uh, down in Southern California, guys volleyball is a lot more common. Even with the low amount of male volleyball players in the nation, Raymond continues to play the sport he loves at the moment, thus spiking down gender stereotypes that volleyball is a sport only played by girls. Welcome back. That was a very interesting segment. Now I'm here with Alana and William, a junior and a sophomore at Gunn High School. They're in the YCS club, and they're here to tell us a little about the organization. Okay, so YCS stands for Youth Community Service, and it has offered community service and learning opportunities for many years, and we are actually celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. How did you get involved with this? Well, as a freshman, I was part of YCS Fellows, and at the time, it was only available to freshmen, but this year, I joined a board at my Gun High School, and I learned that Fellows has been open to all grades, so I joined this year as well. Did you, do, did you guys do any community service before joining YCS? No, I, before joining YCS, I was in middle school, and I didn't really participate in any community service. So why did you get involved um, with the club? Well, I joined because I'm very interested in community service and I wanted to learn more about how I could participate in different opportunities in the community. What, um, so you had to make a difference day, right? Yeah. What, what exactly was your, were your roles in the, in the, at that day, in the day? Well, we, as part of YCS Leadership Fellows, we were part of planning the logistics behind it. For instance, we made, we made pins to hand out at the day event itself. We publicized so people would know about it. And we also prepared information so the people who are actually part of the event would know what they were doing. How exactly did you publicize this event? Well, we had 11 different service sites and we would make flyers with information on all the service sites and we would hand them out around school. We also publicized on the TVN announcements at our school. Um, and we handed out flyers around the community to advertise to all different types of people because it was an event that was open to not just students but also adults as well. Um, do you think we should have community service, I mean, Make a Difference Day more often? Well, Make a Difference Day is actually a, a worldwide day of service, and YCS just simply held an event in this community for it. So, not that I'd rather. It's not that I don't want to have it more often, but that in this occasion, it's just a, it's like if we held a party for Christmas. We, we could hold more events like it, but probably not call it Make a Difference Day. Can you tell us, can you tell me a little bit about the pet shop event? Well, I didn't go to the pet shop event, but I heard that it was a success and there were a lot of volunteers who came um, and they thoroughly enjoyed it and they got to help out in the pet store and um, see how they could impact different pets around the community. How many people are in YCS at your school? At our school, we prob I'm not quite sure on the numbers, but as we have YCS programs all over, we have in Palo Alto, East Palo Alto, Redwood City, Los Altos, I I'm sure we have many, many people involved. In, in our school, our YCS club is one of the biggest clubs, um, so I would say that we probably have around like 80 to 100 members who come to the meetings. How can, how can others get involved in YCS? Well, as previously mentioned, we have events, I mean not events, programs all over, and one, you can just go to our website, youthcommunityservice.org, and you could find a program near you and go ask about it by emailing ycs at youthcommunityservice.org. All right, thank you. So now we have a little segment on the pet shop event, and we hope you, we hope you learn a lot from it. And maybe you could, maybe you should, yeah, maybe you could consider joining YCS.
Hi, my name is Lynn Macy. My husband Mark and I own the Pet Place in Mar Menlo Park. Today we're hosting the Palo Alto Humane Society and the Youth Community Services in do a donation drive. We're, um, we started our business in 1992. Our, the heart and soul of the business is uh, knowledge and rescues, adoptions, and health education and welfare. Hi, my name is Monica and I'm with Youth Community Service. Today, a National Day of Service to Make a Difference Day, I'm here at the Pet Place with the Palo Alto Humane Society doing service helping a local uh, humane society organization help uh, people that come into the store be aware of what the Palo Alto Humane Society does. Um, this falls in line with the mission of YCS in that we are serving others, that we are based about community, about working together, uh, about working together to help local organizations through service. Hi, my name is Leonor Delgado and I work with Palo Alto Humane Society as their humane educator. We go out to schools, we visit after school centers, work with summer camps, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts to spread word about how to be humane to animals and how to care for the homeless animals in our community. We're here today precisely to help the homeless animals in our community, and these are cats who have been abandoned, who are out in the street. The offspring of some of these cats are not a uh, pet, can't be pets. So what we try to do is make certain that they do not reproduce. Uh, so donations here at the pet place today will go toward spay neuter of homeless animals in the community, especially homeless cats or community cats. Hi, I'm Brianna Irani. I'm from Gunn High School. Not only am I part of YCS Interact Club, but I'm also the captain of the girls varsity lacrosse team. I volunteer with YCS through my school and I go to activities which they broadcast throughout the school in like the news and on the and in the morning announcements. Today here at the Pet Place, we're actually volunteering with the Palo Alto Humane Society to let people know about cats and how they can neuter their cats and even to donate food for local cats around the area. Hi, my name is Clara Lynn and I'm a senior at Gunn High School and today I'm participating in Make a Difference Day and I'm working with the Palo Alto Humane Society. I'm a board member of my school's Gunn YCS Interact Club and I love participating in events throughout the community like this. And I'm really excited for today because I'm promoting awareness for cat neutering and adoption and we're having a cat food drive. And I love participating in service because it really provides me with personal fulfillment and I feel like I learned so much by working with new people and being involved in my community. Welcome back. I hope you learned as much as I did. I'm here with Alana and William, who are members of the YCS um, club. Can you, so you mentioned um, events that the YCS had. Can you tell us about upcoming events? Um, yeah, so we are, ho we are planning right now a Martin Luther King Day that we have every year. Um, and it's coming up on January 18th. And Fellows is really working hard with the YCS staff to make it a really fun event that's open to the entire community. Um, it will be held in King Plaza in downtown Palo Alto in front of the City Hall. And there will be service projects and music and entertainment. And like I said, it's open to everyone in the community, so we hope to see everyone there. What, um, so what are you doing, like, preparation for events? Well, we, so far, we've learned a lot about the civil rights movement in preparation. So we can, for instance, last year we made several posters that we distributor among the, amongst the plaza so people could read about it and other than that we're probably going to just keep learning maybe we'll make some games so people can amuse themselves and educational games of course so they can learn about the civil rights movement and have fun so in general right now we're just preparing by learning it ourselves so we can t prepare to teach it to other people all right so here's some um, deep theoretical questions if you had the power to change one thing in your community what would what would you change I would change the way that youth 
look at community service because right now I feel like a lot of people in my school and in my middle school think of community service as something that they have to fulfill like they have to do 15 hours to graduate they don't really look at it as something that really impacts other people in the community so I think that by spreading awareness of these community service projects and community service events that are really fun and engaging to, to the community that will help people see that community service is not just about um, fulfilling graduation requirements, but it's also something that you can do for fun and as a learning experience. And you, William? As for me, I personally just wish that we could get more people involved, not just students, adults, and even, I know adults are busy, but if everyone put five, if everyone in the community put five minutes, well, what, we have nine, uh, several thousand people in this city. So if everyone put five minutes, that'd already be several hours. So if we could get a lot of, a lot more people involved in community service, or just, pe or get more people support, we could get so much more done. So if you, if you could change something in the world, what would you change? Um, that's a big question. There are a lot of things to change in the world, but I think that I would change um, the way that people think of homeless people, because right now there's like a big stereotype that they're dangerous people and they don't work hard or something, but that's not really the case. So if we raise their awareness about that. All right, so thank you for coming on. It was very interesting. Now we have a PSA on the drought. Um, roll the clip. Scary. Hey there, Timmy. <laughs> Gee willikers, mister. What you doing there, sport? Drinking a glass of water. That's terrific. Water is a great source of hydration. But did you know the state of California is currently in a drought? A what? A drought, Timmy. Drought stands for dihydrogen monoxide's running out, and you've got to help today. Oh. Cool. You don't have the foggiest what I said, do you, Timmy? No. It means we don't have much water left, and we need to start trying to save it up. So make sure that you drink up all of that water and don't dump any back into the sink. Here are five more fun and easy ways to save water that you and all your friends can try out. One, don't let the water run while you brush your teeth. Two, don't water your lawn quite as much. Three, only do laundry with full loads. Four, take shorter showers. Five, boycott the golf course and their perfectly manicured and watered grasses. So in conclusion, it's important that you and your parents make sure to do your part in conserving water. You think you can do that, champ? We sure can, mister. Great work, Timmy. Just remember, if we can't start to save our water, California is going to start to look like Nevada soon, a complete desert wasteland. If you be careful when using water, we'll start doing fine in no time. Uh, welcome back. I'm here with James, a freshman at Gunn High School. He is going to talk about, to, he's going to talk to us about some, home, about his homecoming. So what are some major homecoming events at your school? Uh, thank you, Sam. Um, homecoming is a uh, national high school tradition. And at Gunn High School, we have a brunch game as well as a lunch game every single day of the week, Monday through Friday. And the classes compete against each other. Um, but at the same time, they're also cheering each other on. So it's not entirely competitive. There, there's that teamwork aspect. Um, like there's uh, tug of war, there's, uh, there's a obstacle course, and then um, on Friday a favorite one is there's sumo wrestling too, which is uh, quite fun to watch. Yeah, I would um, imagine. <laughs> you can imagine so. Um, but additionally on Thursday and on Friday there's the, on Thursday there's the night rally where each grade puts on a performance and uh, addition, and it, it's judged, so there's a winner for that. And then on Friday, uh, we have the football game, and we also have the homecoming court uh, displayed, as well as the floats that each class has put in hard work to build. 
So, um, can you tell us a little about about yourself? Like, what are your what are your hobbies or interests? So, um, I gen I generally say that my main hobby is making videos for people in the community, but uh, there there I there are other things I do like doing, uh, including quadcopters. But ma mainly videos. I mean, I've had a passion for filmmaking for quite a few years now, and I've been able to make videos about local events and about school events, and um, I've also made some videos for certain teachers. Uh, so it, it, it's all about, for me, it's about making a good video more than uh, getting paid or something. That's that's not my pr first priority. I always look to make a good video for people. So what are some videos you've done in the past? Um, let's see. Generally, whenever there's an event, I people will see me out there with a camera, and I will edit together a short highlight at the end, and I'll air it on the morning announcements. Um, uh, I also did a video for a teacher that would basically cover her entire lesson plan. Um, what else have I done? Uh, generally, generally, mostly just events. Um, but uh, I've also done some videos for school, uh, as in like school work. As and in homecoming. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, homecoming. I did as a little extra project on my uh, on my own. All right, so now we are going to watch the video that James made about homecoming. Roll the clip. Well, it's been a pleasure serving with you, Bay Area. I hope you enjoyed our show and met all our guests. Um, so, yeah, thank you for tuning in, and good night.